you tell us what your names are first of all? Yeah, so I'm um, I'm Dean. And I'm Matt. Matt. Yeah. And this is Ed. Yep. Um, Hello, Ed. And, uh, but my name for living history purposes is Thomas. Oh, I didn't know we were supposed to have secret names. Well, I do. Oh, okay. Because I have my ID there, Thomas Moritz Becker. That's me. Um, and uh, we are East German Border Guards, Grenztruppen, um, uh, doing well, 80s border control, basically. Um, so what we've got in terms of uniforms is we've got three distinct types here. So we've got the later, the 80s type, late 70s, 80s type, I believe, which has, um, you know, sort of sleeves, no exposed buttons, no armoury, of course, with that thing. It's a sort of simplified uniform um, that they may produce later on. Then I'm wearing the 70s version of it, the later 70s version, which, again, has no arm reinforcement, um, but it does have the exposed pocket buttons, um, and a loose um, pistol flap inside, there's a concealed pistol pocket, and so on. And then Ed has the previous version, which is, this is the type that this came is early 70s, yeah. so, so very early 70s. It came after the trials version, come to until 64. Um, so you again, you have the exposed buttons, but now you have reinforced um, elbow, arm patch. elbow patches. And inside, the um, pistol pocket is actually sewn directly into the jacket. Yep. And then the previous version, which is the trials version, has different foliage loops, among other features. Yeah, so they're slightly looser as well. Yeah, because they're, again, they're more designed to be worn over a service uniform. You wear your, uh, your grey wool dress uniform underneath that. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us about the uh, the gear that you're wearing? Uh, yeah, so, um, so I have my bayonet here. It's a bit muddy. Uh, unfortunately. Um, so the, the OK bayonet is actually designed to be used as a wire cutter and a multi-tool. So you can clip it together like this, cut like that, which is why on this earlier version you have the insulated handle um, and then of course the handle on this side is plastic so that if the wire is electrified you don't shock yourself. Um, and then in my magazine pouch here you have two AK magazines in 7.62 by 39 caliber, and these are inert rounds, of course. Um, you have cutlery, very important, very important for a border guard because the food will be brought to them uh, in a truck, in a backpack. Their food and drink will be brought out to them if they're on a long uh, patrol, but they need to have their eating equipment with them. Uh, this is an East Gen box of ammo. This is again mm -hmm. inert rounds, and these are the later 74 type, which is 5.45. But this is how they were packed when they were issued with loose ammunition, just to show you. And then in the bottom of my magazine pouch, I have my cleaning kit. Uh, this particular setup of equipment here is actually based on the equipment of a border guard who defected in the 70s, uh, who had exactly this equipment loaded into his magazine pouch. Okay. Uh, so on my back, I have my thin team on the left hand side. Nothing on the right hand side where the army would have their shovel. The army would also carry a gas mask bag and wear a helmet. But uh, when the border guards were subsumed into the army, they decided, uh, because of protestations from the west, that to make them look a bit less aggressive, they'd lose the helmet and gas mask. Um, and then, Ed, you've got your radio. Um, so that's just for communication between the units. Um, it's a kind of short, short range ish. Radio. Yep, yep. And then on its back is another particularly border guard item, mm -hmm. which is the rain cape, which in the mili in the army was only issued to officers and stuff because the uniforms are um, themselves water resistant, or they were new. Um, but in the case of the border guards, when you're stood out in the rain for a long time, you need something properly waterproof. So they were all issued a rain cape and they would be carried when there was rain. <laughs> And in Matt's case, Matt here is not actually a border guard, but a voluntary helper. Oh, no, not that one. So he doesn't wear a rank. He's actually got the civilian helper of the shoulder boards, which have no rank, no yep. military connection, and his green armband to denote that he is a helper, which is why he doesn't need to cut his hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah nice loophole. 
So Ed, Ed here is a gefreiter, which is uh, a rank not equivalent to corporal. No, it's so a, bit of a bit like private. You know, sort of in between. Yeah. So it's just a sort of specialisation rank, essentially, because it doesn't really correspond. And I am a lieutenant, so that's I'm a, a, a junior officer straight out of officer school. So you do three years at the school, then you graduate, then you go unto lieutenant, lieutenant, and so on. Okay. Thank and you very much. The other thing you'll notice actually before I finish is that you'll notice that mine and Ed's hats are different materials. So conscripted soldiers have wool uniforms and hats, and professional soldiers, so whether they're professional NCOs or um, officers, they wear uh, gabardine type material. And we also, we both, because of our uniforms, have the early type cap, which is um, not sewn at the, at the crown. These would be sewn on the later cap. One question. How do you find your um, wise traps? How yeah. do they uh, yeah. fall apart or? Uh, they do if you crawl. Okay. Um, if you crawl very frantically, which I've done um, in a um, combat scenario that I was at, um, it did it did separate, the buckle separated because I was crawling on my belly and I lost various parts. Um, but for the most part, no, they're, honestly, they're quite good. I find it more comfortable than say 58 pattern. As a slim guy, with that you're trying to pack a lot of stuff onto a belt and it doesn't really fit, it's very rigid, it gets heavy. This stuff, it bears heavily on the shoulders, but yeah. apart, apart from that, it's, it's comfortable to wear, yeah. yeah. Don't wear a lot of even, yeah. even when you're in the army, you only have the gas mask bag and the shovel and it, as long as your canteen is full, which mine isn't, it all balances out quite well. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the interview guys.